Good evening, one and all. This is Obinandan back again with the second part of Medina Stock with Joe Morrison. So tonight we're going to start off by asking Joe the amazing question of his experience of the Kolkata Derby. First impressions are always important, aren't they? When when you meet Correct. someone, um, your first job out of university, many experiences that you go through in your life. The first time that it happens to you always leaves a greater impression than any time it happens to you afterwards. And my first experience of uh, Indian professional football was watching the Calcutta derby. And nice. it was Mombagan and East Bengal. And then I'll mm. never forget, there's so many elements to it which were really visceral to me, which were uh, like ecstatic. It, was, it wasn't just the fact that we went to that game and did a mm -hmm. broadcast on that game. It was also... Mm. The broadcast itself, I remember the, the, them building this bamboo uh, platform on the third tier, and you know <laughs> what the Salt Lake Stadium is like. So yeah. there was this platform, which wasn't level, mm -hmm. and we had these stools which had wheels on them, and mm -hmm. uh, it was a hundred foot drop, you know, on a stool <laughs> like I'm sitting today. I was looking over the back, and there was the pitch <laughs> side. And then Budgie, I don't know if you remember Budgie. Budgie uh, decided, uh, so, so you know the stadium. I, I don't need to tell those who are watching. Of course, what the stadium's like. of course. But there's yeah. lots of segments, uh, segregated segments. At, uh, there was at that time. Mm -hmm. So fences in between sections. So to get from where we were, what was our green room, where we mm -hmm. had our coffee and tea and sandwiches mm -hmm. and everything, up to the mm -hmm. place where we were broadcasting on the third tier was mm -hmm. a long way and through this very complex system of gates and, and, and levels, etc. So the executive right. producer said, look, it's going to take too long to go up there, do the rehearsals and come back down again. Just let's mm -hmm. go up there and stay up there until we start broadcasting, which is what we did. Mm -hmm. And Budgie oh, wow. was a bit tired. So he mm -hmm. decided to lie on the back of the platform behind the stools <laughs> that was 100 feet up, not level. And oh, all man. I had visions of was Budgie in his sleep rolling over and falling 100 feet to the pitch side below. So, you know, it's little things like that that, um, mm -hmm. that you remember in terms of the experience. And then the mm -hmm. day before going to watch training, um, mm. at the Maidan and, you know, the fans, the, the, the Mariners fans that turned up on that particular day. I was, I was shocked. I was, yes, you'd expect maybe five or six fans to turn up, but it was way more than that. Like, I couldn't count, but it was a good, I don't know, anyone who's watching this that was there, yeah. they'll tell me. It was a good 50, 60, might have been pushing 100 fans um, mm -hmm. for the training session the day before. So that's what I remember about that. I hope that answers your question. So Joe, there are lots of buzz about Mohan Bagan's transformation lately. Do you think these changes were necessary, provided how your perspective was about Mohan Bagan till 2020? Up until 2020, mm -hmm. um, they were wallowing. And they weren't wallowing for any fault of theirs. They were wallowing mm -hmm. because of the shambolic organizational, uh, let's call it infrastructure of mm -hmm. Indian professional football. That's why they were wallowing. So, mm -hmm. you know, I could quite easily see that uh, up to 2020, I could quite easily mm -hmm. see the demise of Mohan Bagan and East Bengal. And that mm -hmm. would have been a huge shame considering their, their history. So, uh, Joe, coming back to Mohan Bagan's inclusion in the ISL, so do you think the heritage and the legacy of Mohan Bagan has been compromised after the merger? Um, not really, because I have no doubt that at some point in the future the ATK name will be dropped. Um, mm -hmm. The Mo Mohan Bagan, you know, everything nowadays, wherever you are in the world, is about the brand, brand recognition, um, brand uh, trust, they talk about, don't they, in, in corporations? Right. So the brand Mohan Bagan is way bigger than the brand ATK. No ifs mm -hmm. or buts about it because of the legacy yeah. that we talked about earlier in the history. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it really affects it in that regard. If, if you don't lose the Mohan Bagan brand, by the way, mm -hmm. there'll be a riot if they drop <laughs> yeah, the of and uh, kept ATK. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'll be part of that riot. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be in throwing tomatoes at whoever made that decision. <laughs> So um, yeah. count me in, because um, yeah. So the, you talk about the history, that you talk about the legacy. Um, I mm. think it's really important that Moan began brand, um, because mm -hmm. that's what you, you know. What are we doing now? 
we are doing an interview on the mm. Mariners TV channel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, so, is it what? 80K? Really? Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, oh and there's okay. one other thing I need. I need to let you into a little secret. Well, it's not. A yeah, sure. Secret. It's not a secret. And that is, okay. I've never liked red and white stripes because, as you know, I'm from Newcastle. My team is uh... Newcastle United. <laughs> they play in black and white stripes. So any team that plays in red and white stripes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, green and maroons are color. It's color of pride and emotion. Your take on the European Super League, well, that raised a lot of eyebrows, a lot of hatred, a lot of controversies. So, what's your take on the European Super League? Like, should it be cancelled? And what about the big decision from the UEFA president saying that they should exclude the three giants from Europe? Um, first of all, in basic principle, I agree with the European Super League. In terms mm -hmm. of format, I disagree with the European Super League. That's one thing. And let's just put that to the side for a second. Mm -hmm. One thing that I discovered when that news exploded like an atomic bomb um, mm -hmm. across the planet on that particular week was that everyone just jumped on the noise. And that's the mm -hmm. problem with social media now. No one actually mm -hmm. went, um, wait a second, let me go and read the full article or the full mm -hmm. information and then make a decision for myself. Everyone just ran off like a bunch of sheep. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whatever their friend says on social media is now their opinion. Whatever some pundit said, some ex-player mm -hmm. said on social media is now their opinion. Well, first of all, mm -hmm. the ex-players need to sit down and be quiet because they've done very handsomely out of mm -hmm. the advent of the Premier League in particular, mm -hmm. which was a breakaway league in itself, 12 clubs. People forget that. And a lot of people yeah. watching this need to go away and have a look at their history and find mm -hmm. out what happened with the advent of the Premier League. Now, mm -hmm. the other side of it is current players came out. Well, mm -hmm. come on, they're PR stunts, man. Because mm -hmm. the current situation of football is dire in terms of the finances. It's dire. The, the Premier right. League clubs are lucky because they have these fabulous TV deals uh, that mm -hmm. have been built up over a long period of time and have built right. up an audience over a long, a global audience over a long period of time. And the revenues right. that are coming in, I mean, what is it, 100 million if you get relegated from the Premier League, if you come mm. and finish bottom. So they can afford to be a little bit more cautious. But all the other teams, right. the big names around Europe, can't be. Real Madrid, half a billion True. in debt. Barcelona, oh, 1.3 yeah. billion in debt. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Juventus, half a billion in debt. And that's just three off the top of my head. We could go on for a whole bunch of others. Inter in debt, right. AC Milan in right. debt. It's only mm -hmm. the, the oil money clubs that are not in debt. Manchester United is right. half a billion in debt. So, so coming back to the ESL, the, ESL, the Super mm. League, the format mm. needs to change because um, the global audience is drifting away. Let me ask you personally, mm. Um, mm -hmm. if it was a season of Champions mm. League, Barcelona against mm. um, Panathinaikos or... Right. Um, uh, Bate Borisov, the Tractor Boys. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Would you stay up till one a.m. to watch those games? No, because we know it's an easy, it's a cakewalk, basically. Right. If Barcelona yeah. were playing Juventus, uh, uh, a, let's call it a Juventus level club. So one week Juventus, mm -hmm. the next week Liverpool, the week after that PSG. Mm -hmm. If they were playing mm -hmm. those caliber of teams, would you stay up until mm -hmm. one o'clock in the group stages? Would you stay up until uh, one o'clock? Of course, yeah, of course. So, so the fact of the matter is, and you can't get away from this, the fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. you're not trying to appeal to, I call them ultras and casuals. The ultras mm -hmm. are ones that, you're, you're a Mariners ultra. Mm -hmm. No matter right. what the game, who they're playing against, you'll watch the Mariners. I'm not a Mariners mm -hmm. ultra, I'm a Mariners casual. I'll watch the mm -hmm. Mariners against East Bengal. I'll watch Mohan mm -hmm. against East Bengal. Because it's a big game and uh, it gets me excited and it gets my blood flowing and my passion going. But the other games don't. So Correct. you see the difference. You're trying to grab the casual audience, not the ultras audience. And this mm -hmm. is the problem they have. Now, this is where reading between the lines and digesting the actual information, the mm -hmm. format itself needs a lot of discussion. And mm -hmm. the one thing, the fundamental thing they got wrong with the ESL was they went off half-baked. You never right. start any new project half-baked. You have everything in place, everything organized, all the contracts signed, ready to mm. go. They didn't have a broadcaster. They did not right. have a broadcaster signed, sealed, and delivered. They did mm. not have 
a backer signed, sealed, and delivered. Let's call them a headline sponsor. They, mm-hmm. People say JP Morgan. No, JP Morgan weren't their backer sponsor. They were mm-hmm. going to loan them three and a half billion. They wanted mm-hmm. that money back. When I say mm-hmm. a headline sponsor, I'm talking. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a recent example. Oh yes, Formula One. Saudi Aramco mm-hmm. has just pumped mm-hmm. a huge amount of money into Formula One to be their right. headline sponsor. They are right. not loaning the money to Formula One and asking for it back over the next few years. They're giving it. Right. They're right. giving the money. So right. um, that, that's what I'm saying. So they didn't have any of that in place. They didn't mm-hmm. get their information out. Whoever their PR team mm-hmm. so should also be taken out and put in front of a firing squad um, mm-hmm. because everyone thought it was a 20-team closed league. No, no. Mm-hmm. The format was wrong. Let's just not talk about that. The format was mm-hmm. wrong. But they were planning on having 15 teams that didn't change mm-hmm. and five teams that came in and out based on whatever their criteria was. You came top right. of your European league. You could get mm-hmm. into one of those five. So that's not a closed league. Now, mm-hmm. that format itself needs a lot of work and a lot of discussion. And I disagree with it. I disagree with that 15 right. plus five. Okay. However, what I do agree with is the UEFA solution of expanding the Champions League just to have more shit teams in it, yeah. it doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't solve the problem. So Joe, uh, you're the current host of Facebook Watch's coverage of La Liga in the Indian subcontinent. So what's your take on broadcasting the live sports on a social media site instead of TV? How different is it? It's a great question. Um, there are two fundamentals. One is that uh, it doesn't matter which set of stats you look at, but mm-hmm. uh, the largest consumption of sport by the young mm-hmm. generation in particular, but certainly that young generation is becoming less young and the numbers are going up in terms <laughs> of the age categories, um, mm-hmm. is on mobile phone, uh, on mobile right. phone devices and sometimes tablets, but certainly mobile, let's call it mobile phones and tablets and not mm-hmm. on TV screens. So mm-hmm. that's the first thing. The, the social media platforms are accelerating that process. Now, mm-hmm. some of the um, broadcasters have recently, in recent years, got into uh, digital OTT. They've got their own apps, mm-hmm. Sony Live, for example. Um, and uh, what's the one for Star? Is it uh, Geo? Is it Geo? I can't remember. Um, so anyway, you know, that's the way it's going to be consumed in the future. And you just have to get used to that if you're older like me. Um, the right. other thing that comes with it, and this is the bit that I think has, is that has the, the largest USP for us. Hmm. And that is the engagement. I love the right. audience. Um, your comments that you made at the beginning were just, you mm-hmm. know, so kind. And we've had some great fun together over the years, myself and the, the Indian audience, going all the way back to the C2K days. Um, and the thing is that even though C2K days, that, that was built on the back of, we used the platform Twitter at that time. And we actually had yes. live tweets coming into the show and I was right. reading them out and engaging with the audience. That's yeah. still something that is not really done in television. Mm-hmm. And people, people right. will say to me, ah, oh, yes, but I watched this sports show last night and they, they had um, uh, comments from the from the uh, audience. No, uh, Mm -hmm. let me tell you one of the biggest falsehoods when it Mm -hmm. comes to including social media and television. They're pre-prepped. They pick them out earlier on or an hour before the show or sometimes, by the way, it can be a day before the show, but that's not so much anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. Our our turnaround is six seconds. Six Mm -hmm. seconds. You can message and if your message is selected, It's six seconds between you sending it and it getting on air. You know, that's if it's an immediate turnaround. So so it feels like the audience is in the studio with me. And I absolutely love that because they ask great questions um, on one side. On the other side, sometimes Mm -hmm. they ask dumb but very funny questions. And it allows Mm -hmm. them to connect directly with the pundits. Who says, Mm -hmm. because remember, this is all about opinions at the end of the day. That's what we're all on here for. You're, you're mm. interviewing me now, not to get any right. facts or scientific information. You're interviewing right. me for my opinion. And it's just my opinion. And someone may right. agree with it and someone may disagree with it. So right. it's about opinion. So what makes the audience and the fans' opinions any less than the person sitting in the studio? And for too long, sure. from my mm. side of the camera, there's been mm-hmm. far too much arrogance talking at you, talking at the audience. I know mm-hmm. everything. You know nothing. I'm going to talk at you. No. I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that. And I don't like it either. It's like, Mm -hmm. let me talk with you. 
So you have a point. You know,、mm -hmm. it's like saying who's the best player on the planet. Correct. Who's the best player on the planet? You see what I'm saying? You, th there is no right answer to that. There's only a series of opinions, and the reason is that there's no right answer is what are the parameters、mm -hmm. of our argument? Is it about goals scored?、Mm -hmm. Is it about Ballon d'Ors won? Is it about trophies lifted? Is it about World Cups, European Champions? It doesn't matter what it is. Once you set、right. the parameters, that's when you can narrow it、mm -hmm. down to what the right answer is. So,、mm -hmm. um, so Facebook, and it's not just Facebook. Amazon is doing it in the、mm -hmm. UK. They've taken some、mm -hmm. Premier League rights in the UK. Um, mm -hmm. I like the fact that it's free because I like free things,、um, and we all like、yes. free things. Who, who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't like free things? I like the fact that、yeah. it's free,、um, and I like the fact that、um, the audience is part of the conversation, which they're not on traditional TV. Yeah, it's absolutely a fascinating thing. In fact, I was also very excited about. The Facebook Watch thing. I mean, the kind of cameras, the technology that is being used right now is absolutely top notch.、Mm. And of course,、uh, the the live interaction between the audience as well as the presenter, it just sort of gives you such an amazing touch. It's such an exciting, like a, a feeling that you know it's just happening in real time. And I think that could be the future of broadcasting. You never know. Well, it's 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 about a conversation. So if you go and look at、yeah. the various fan YouTube channels that have been really successful, you know,、mm -hmm. fans want to just they want to talk in an informal. I mean, goodness me! Every time I have to put on a suit and tie for a, a、yeah. show nowadays, you know, who goes to a game <laughs> and watches a game in a suit and tie? I've never understood、yeah. that. I've never、mm -hmm. understood why pundits turn up in black suit, black tie, white shirt, <laughs> you know, Armani,、um, whatever <laughs> suit. It's like, come on, you know, it's it's old school. It's it's the way TV and broadcast was done, but it's changing. Broadcast is changing all the time. And if you go and look, I, I put on my LinkedIn profile the other day a series of stats. It was American trends, but it was showing、mm -hmm. the rise of mobile phone consumption of broadcast and the demise、right. of television consumption of broadcast. So、mm -hmm. and magazines and newspapers and all the rest of it. So、um, you know, it's an interesting, it's an interesting topic that we could go into, but it would last days. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So Joe, let's come back to Indian football now. Is there、uh, a possibility of ISL and I League coming together as one league、yeah. in the near future? Yeah, yeah. It, it'll they'll, they'll combine it at some point in the future. I think they've、mm. got to get through a few political hurdles, a few. Um, legislative barriers,、um, mm -hmm. for example. But yeah, I think the movement of Mohun Bagan and East Bengal、mm -hmm. was a huge power shift towards the ISL last year. Because now,、mm -hmm. what have you got in the I League? You know. So、um, the only thing I will say about the I League is the cost of entry is much lower for any new club coming up. So, and that's a good thing. So、mm -hmm. you do want a tapering. Of the you know of the costs, you you should have a tapering, and you should you want a pyramid, you want a, a pyramid, you know scheme in Indian football because that what is it all about? It doesn't matter whether it's、mm -hmm. you in your career or in your university or you're in school.、Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you're involved in life. You're just trying to climb、mm -hmm. a ladder, and the same thing should be for Indian football. So coming back to Mohun Bagan, how will our team? How will Mohun Bagan? How will the Mariners fare in the upcoming AFC? Um, well, first of all, you don't know, and I'll tell you why you don't know. Because、mm -hmm. um, you've got to go through that entire squad and say、mm -hmm. um, who has. You need a squad, and, and certainly a team, but you need a squad that has experience with playing in other parts of Asia. And the only players、mm -hmm. that really have that experience are the ones who played for the national team, such as、uh, mm -hmm. Sandish. So、mm -hmm. um, uh, he's not the only one, but you know, it's、mm -hmm. about the whole team. So. Will they? Will they do okay? I hope they do. I think FC Goa did fabulously in the、oh, AFC、yeah. Champions League. Why?、Mm -hmm. Because they held their own. They weren't humiliated. That's the first、mm -hmm. step. I want、Correct. to see two teams in、mm -hmm. AFC competition every single year. Because anyone that makes a mistake in AFC、mm -hmm. competition, and and I don't、mm -hmm. know how to describe this to those who are watching. The games are different. The Iranians, for example, play football、mm -hmm. in a different way and are a much higher level than、yeah. the, the Indian players. The、mm -hmm. um, the Arabs are here in the Middle East. They、mm -hmm. play the game at a much higher level than India.、Mm -hmm. So, and I'm talking at club level. So, and then you have to look at the rankings,、uh, you know, AFC rankings, etc. So that all feeds into that. 
So the point of the matter is that experience that's gained playing in those competitions, playing in Asia, even if you don't go very far, will then have a knock-on effect to the national team. Mm -hmm. those, you can, you, I can spot a player in mm. any club in India that I know has played for the national team. I can spot them. I don't even have to know the number on their back. I can just say they've played for the national team and have been exposed to better mm. teams and better quality opposition. Because that's the only thing that works. It's, it's just about experience in life. To be exposed to a bigger challenge will make you better as a team. Awesome. So who's your current favorite player in the green and maroon stripes? Sandesh. I've got to say... I've got, I've got to say Sandish. <laughs> the reason I've got to say Sandish is we did the uh, mm -hmm. the um, derby match together, the Classico last year together. So he was pitch side ah, next nice. to me, and and Sandish mm -hmm. is bigger than me, and uh, mm -hmm. and than me, so he he would probably destroy me if I didn't say him. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, Real Madrid or Barcelona? Barcelona. The next question, Brazil or Argentina? Brazil. Awesome. Okay. Next question would be uh, very obvious. And I know the answer because I've heard you say this zillions of times. Ronaldo or Messi? Messi. The, the greatest yeah. player yes. that I will see in my lifetime and you mm -hmm. may see in your lifetime. It'll be a of long course. time before another player like mm -hmm. him comes on. God-given talent. The final one. You know what's coming up. Mohan Bagan or East Bengal? Are you trying to get me uh, stoned the next... And I don't mean stoned as in stone. I mean stoned <laughs> as in rocks. The next time I get off the plane in Calcutta, is that what you're trying to do? No, okay. no, don't worry. I'll personally go and pick you up. Don't worry about I, it. I, I, I hope that East Bengal fan club or whatever interviews me next week so I can give their answer. I've got to say, <laughs> I've got to say Mohan Bagan. In all honesty. In all honesty. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. And uh, this has been one of the most memorable, memorable episodes that I have personally done. And it's the first episode and we have the legendary Joe Morrison with us. So, Joe, anything to say to our fans? Yes, you are the flag bearers of Indian football. You're the flag bearers of Mon Bagan. Remember, you know how old your club is. And there are many who supported before you, and there's many who will be supporting Mon Bagan after you're gone. So just remember, you're a temporary custodian, and it's up to you to carry the flag forward for Indian football. No matter what you go on and do in the rest of your lives, make sure that you carry that flag forward. Not backwards, forwards. It's so important to the development of the game in India. Join Mon Bagan. Thank you for watching Millionaire's Talk with Joe Morrison. This is Odin Ono signing off. And before I sign off, I would like to request you all to follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Millionaire's Ayana TV. Please follow us and please extend your support. Joy Mohan Bagan, Joy Mohan Bagan, Joy Mohan Bagan.